Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Have you guys noticed that a lot of very wealthy and influential people in the earth are building these underground bunkers and facilities or what they call doomsday bunkers preparing for the apocalypse? Did you also know that there is a couple last days biblical prophecies that speak to this very thing. Before we talk about those biblical prophecies, I want to talk about what was just sent to me for many of you guys. Uh, this is recently in from the Daily Star. Look at the title of this article, folks. Bible prophecy is coming true as claims billionaires build huge underground bunkers. Let me read some of this to you guys. Some of the richest men on earth are building doomsday bunkers in a move that was predicted in the last and most dramatic book of the Bible, according to a leading podcaster. It has recently emerged that Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg, currently ranked fourth on the Forbes billionaire list, has spent $187 million on a 1,600-acre patch of land in Hawaii. He's now reportedly building a luxury ranch, incorporating a 5,000 square foot underground bunker complete with its own energy and food supplies. The bunker beneath Zuckerberg's Kalua Ranch is expected to feature a giant metal door filled with concrete, a feature typical of nuclear bomb shelters. Podcaster Christina Randall claims that Zuckerberg's bunker is just the latest of around 15 doomsday shelters being built by billionaires around the globe. So what in the world is going on here, folks? Now, for years, people have been building these doomsday bunkers. This is nothing new, but something is definitely going on. You're seeing a massive increase of very wealthy and influential people that are building these underground bunkers and facilities right now. This is incredible because when you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 19. So the book of Isaiah was written about 700 years before John wrote the book of Revelation. Listen to this. Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 19. Isaiah records the following. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. And then when you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. Now, in context here, this is during the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet. The rapture of the church will occur. Then after that, the Antichrist will be revealed. And then the tribulation period will begin. It is going to be absolutely horrific during the tribulation period. Yes, things are crazy in this world right now. But if you think they're bad right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Go read Revelation chapter 6 through Revelation chapter 19. You're going to see how bad it's going to be during this coming tribulation period. So when we go to Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 to 17, listen to this. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sat, sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? It's just incredible because Isaiah records what he records. And then after that, about 700 years later, when John writes the book of Revelation, he says basically the same exact thing. So the reason we continue to see a massive increase of the very wealthy and influential people in the earth building these underground bunkers and facilities, or as they call it, doomsday bunkers, is because they know something is coming. Absolutely, something horrific is coming. But before that, someone else is coming, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to rapture his church before this horrific time frame known as the tribulation period begins on the earth. In fact, it's going to be so bad 
that I want to reread again Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. Pay very close attention. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us. Folks are literally going to say, Fall on us. Cover us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of a lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? You do not want to be here for what is coming on this planet. And the good news, as I'm doing this video, the rapture has not happened yet. You can be saved and escape the wrath to come, and you can do it right now. How are you saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God, and our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. You will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven in the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.